Welcome back to Guitar Search Saturdays. My name's Shane. This is our finale in the guitar shops across Florida series. We're at Bulk Race Vintage Guitars here in Miami. It's hot, it's humid, and there's no better place to be on a day like today than in a guitar shop that also specializes in vintage cars. This is unlike any other shop I've ever seen in my life. So I think you're in for a bit of a treat. I've waited two years to come in and do this video. Bill, the owner, I've been chatting with him for a long time now, and it's great to be able to turn this idea into a reality. So we're gonna go in and showcase not only how many great guitars, amps, and all that kind of stuff they've got, but some of the finest automobiles you'll ever find. And this shop is really something special. So let's go in and take a look. This is insane. Porsche, great 80s cars, all kinds of classics. We'll talk to an expert on this in just a moment because I'm no means a car expert but I can appreciate the 80s in a good way and some of these look like they're from that era. Woo, Ferrari. <laughs> Man. Fire out. Red leather interior. I'll take it. Nah, you won't do that. Wow, look at this. Lefty and righty guitars on the wall over here. This is crazy good. And there's more guitars over here too. Looks like we've got all our Fender range on this wall, or at least some of them. Beautiful. With a, what's this, a Chevrolet Corvette? Man. You see these in the movies, not in person. This is better than a car museum I went to many years ago. This is fantastic. 1990, <laughs> Ferrari Testarossa. And because we're here for guitars, we have more here. This isn't it. There's also a second side of the shop that I'll show you in just a moment, but we've got plenty of great Epiphones here. Wow. Gibson Acoustics and Epiphone. Plenty of cool stuff here. And this, this is the main section of the guitar shop. How about this? Amps all the way down the shop here. Beautiful Gibson left and right-handed guitars on the wall. So we're in luck, might be able to test out a few. Then down here, we got more Gibsons. This might be one of the biggest Gibson stores I've ever seen. This is really, really great. Got Supro amplifiers, Magnetone, Kemper profiling amp. I had one of these for a while, very cool couple of great little Marshall amps, but this wall of Gibson's is fantastic. I know a few friends of mine who would love to see this and play a lot of these righties, very nice. And then we'll just take a look down here. Oh, we've got our EVH guitars and more Fender as well, being that they're made by the same brand. Oh man, look at that Paisley Tally up here. Woo! Very nice, very nice. And we even have a bass section over here as well. <laughs> I'm here with Jonathan from Wild Grace Vintage Guitars, who's twice my height. So thank you so much for uh, giving us the rundown of these beautiful cars here. I don't sure know man. much about cars other than what I like. And cool. some of these look stunning. So thank you. if we can pick your brain on a little bit about, you know, what you look for at sure. the shop here, as well as what you've got, that would be awesome. Absolutely, man. So cool. uh, you can see walking throughout that we do love our Porsches. Yep. Um, we're standing next to a really cool one. This is a 1988 Porsche 928 S4 manual. Um, it's one of the most desired specifications of this car coming in a manual. It was the Beautiful. first V8 Porsche that, that they had ever made. And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty important in terms of history. It was really the, the car that almost replaced the 911. Um, wow. the, the iconic 911 is seen here in a turbo variant and it's seen over there <laughs> yeah. in an SC variant. So uh, these cars were made from the end of the 77 upwards uh, to, to 19, um, ooh, end, end of the 80s, early 90s in, 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 cool. in a similar form. So throughout you'll see a, a mix of American muscle, uh, yeah. Italian, obviously um, German in the Porsche world. And uh, we're always, you know, getting new stuff in and out. There's some British cars here and there. And uh, what we really look for is exclusivity. Yep. Um, we never buy from public auction, and we really tend to focus solely on collectors. And, mm -hmm. and uh, the logic behind that is that when you when you purchase a Picasso from auction, everyone knows about it. But when you buy one that that's not really 
publicly yep. available. Um, even though we're very public, we, we conceal VIN numbers and, yeah, and okay. uh, make sure that when the listing is killed online, it's, the car is relatively a ghost. So the story wow. that, that, uh, of the car, of its history, is, is up to the owner to, ta to tell, not, not really the auction house or yep. anyone else. I think I've seen the Instagram where there's a call for certain models and makes. Is, yep. that, is that right? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure I follow Absolutely. some of stuff. I love the yeah. look of this. Yeah, this uh, is special, man. Ferrari here, right? So this is amazing. So this is a 1978 Ferrari 512 BB, which stands for Berlinetta Boxer, Berlinetta in Italian, translating in English to Little Coupe and Boxer, um, going ahead and, and indicating the, the way that the pistons move. So oh, wow. opposed to like a V, which will actually move like this, the pistons will move like a Boxer's motor. And it oh, actually yeah. allows for the profile of the motor to be extremely short. So if you look at the profile of this car, mm -hmm. it's actually very short. So they were able to fit um, this almost five liter flat 12, not <laughs> yeah, a V12, wow. flat 12 in the back of this car. So this car here, the, the BB and the, uh, the Testarossa share the same power plant that is technically the successor to this car, um, which came out at the end of, of 83. Um, so it's, yeah. you're seeing a bit of history here. Yeah, this, this yeah, is man. stunning. I mean, I've never yeah. at all, I, when I walked in, I said, this is better than a car show yeah. I went to in LA <laughs> many years ago. This is super cool. I've got to ask you also, if you don't mind, the one at the back, that ah. black one. So, so this is really, really special. So this just came in yesterday. Um, and you know, it's interesting. We don't typically focus in on any artist owned or kind of celebrity backed things, but every now and then something special walks through the door. And um, so this car is a 1989 Lamborghini Countach, 25th anniversary <laughs> yes. edition. Yeah. Um, and it was sold new to none other than Sir Rod Stewart. Wow. And um, you know, everyone else was loving black ones and white ones. And he yeah. said, no, I'll have it in black. And uh, excuse me, red ones and white ones. And he said, I'll have it in black. So car's gone uh, just under seven, just over 7,000 miles over the course of its life. Yeah, and wow. uh, it's, it's just, just incredible. So we're fortunate enough to, to have this one on sale and uh, you know, it's, you see a bunch of these and you get pretty jaded from being in the same, you know, industry for a few generations family, family wise. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, when you start to look at cars, you're like, ah, oh, it's a car, you know, it's, I don't get really excited anymore, but mm -hmm. you know, the, the gentleman who owns this car, he, he came in and he's like, I have something you might be interested in. And he had a, a binder and it was a leather, a, a, a oh, tan well. leather bound yeah. binder. I said, well, it's either a, a Ferrari or Lamborghini. And he goes, well, it's, it's a Lamborghini. And then he hands me a copy of the original title and it said, Roderick Stewart. I'm like, um, <laughs> oh, wow. yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, you know, it, the synergy oh. obviously with us, cars and guitars and some rock and roll, it, 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 it worked out just well. So we took this in yesterday. Cool. How old did you say this one is? 1989. Oh, wow. So it looks, 33 years. It's amazing. Not bad, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. you can see, it's like a mirror. Almost. Yeah. So we just had this one completely paint corrected. So yeah. if you look at it, it's really well leveled. The reflections are amazing. And the, we also had it, uh, um, done by a shop here in Miami called Cryo Boys. So okay. they, 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 um, they went ahead and did the whole motor so that the engine has been shot with dry ice beads mm -hmm. and brought back to an insanely original finish. So the car is just in great shape. And uh, this, this market, you know, as an asset class, as a car, has just gone absolutely wild. And everyone's focus is really on these cars as of late. Yeah, oh, this, this is stunning. And Special, huh? lastly, if you've yeah. got time, I'd love of to course, hear man. a little bit about this blue ah, guy. Big boy, all right. Yeah. It's interesting because, like, you know, Americans gravitate directly to everything that's not American, you know, uh, yeah, okay. but, but uh, I'll, I'll open a, I'll open the hood on this one. And I'll, actually, I'll take out something that's pretty <laughs> special. It's that's in there. So this is a, this is a Gibson Les Paul, obviously that's, that's painted by a wonderful artist. His name is Dave Snyder. And uh, we found Dave at, a, at Amelia Island one year and uh, which is an amazing concours. And, um, so Dave is a, is a, we're plugging him up here. Dave's a, Dave's a great artist who has had an eye for cars forever and ever. We have some of his prints up there. And he and his wife, they, they travel the US, if not the world, yeah. kind of showing his incredible art form. So he, um, when, when we started carrying his stuff, he, he went ahead and painted this guitar. And, and uh, you know, if, when we sell the car, we'll go ahead and yeah, deliver yeah. the guitar with it. But it's, it's hand painted to match this car. So this is a 1967. Um, Marina blew over black with a factory, what's called black stinger, um, big block Corvette stingray convertible. So, uh, this is the final year of this body style. Mm -hmm. Um, and they made this body style from 63 to 67. It was the first Corvette variation to actually come in a fixed hard top coupe. Um, again, 63, 67, you might be familiar with a split window Corvette. That was the first coupe really that came out wow. in 63. Cool. Um, but the meat and potatoes of this yeah. car is what's under the hood. So <laughs> here we go. Again, this so, is this is beautiful. Like this is this is so insane. beautiful. Yeah, this is not. So 
This is a 7.1 liter naturally aspirated <laughs> oh, wow. motor. Yeah, it's, so this motor, uh, I, to, to my knowledge, in 65, they started racing this in, uh, in, in NASCAR. Oh, okay. So, you know, looking at it, it runs out of gas. Idling, it runs out of gas. Yeah, it, yeah, seven it, liters. I've never heard, of, it, yeah, never heard of it before. It's got a straw connected directly to the, to the gas tank <laughs> to your foot pedal. And uh, yeah. It's pretty nuts, and the exhaust wow. is right by your ear, which is which is magic. And uh, wow, this is stunning. Yeah, it's really yeah, really cool. Yeah, wow. Really cool. Hey, yeah. thank you so much Anytime, for the man. rundown. I thank appreciate, you, appreciate it. it. Yeah, this yeah. is super cool. I, yeah, I'm man. I'm like blown away by the. I, I don't know enough about cars, but <laughs> it just makes me want to learn more. You so know, thank enough you. to ask. Yeah, yeah. This this is awesome. Thank, thank you so you much. Guys. Anytime, man. Thank you for so, coming. No yeah. worries. Here we have our acoustic room. So if you're a fan of Martin, come check out Walt Grace Vintage Guitars. They got plenty of really great acoustics all different sizes from these mini ones over here all the way through to more regular ones. Now, if we take a look over here, there's another really great wall of acoustic guitars. I'm here with Bill, the owner of Walt Grace Vintage Guitars here in Miami. Thank you so much for letting us do this walkthrough My and pleasure. check out your shop. It's such a long time coming. We started talking about this two years, two years ago at least, you yeah. know, before COVID. So it's it great to finally have you here thanks nice to meet you and uh great to check out this shop it raises so many questions this store it's so good on so many levels the Thank cars you. are amazing like the guitar selection is amazing you got new old school vintage guitars tell us a little bit about the thought process behind something this epic <laughs> thought process well i don't know that i'd call it a process it was yeah. it was one of those things where i uh i didn't go to bed the night before wake up that morning saying i'm gonna quit my 25 year career and start this <laughs> this insane thing taking two totally disparate things vintage cars and vintage guitars and and putting them together mm -hmm. into into one uh into one gallery um i was in advertising for the better part of 25 Five years and uh, kind of got to the point in my career where I was just kicking around kind of almost aging out if I want to be a little you know rough on myself <laughs> yeah. but you know you reach a certain point in your career where you're just going through the motions you're you know um, just not creatively satisfied anymore mm -hmm. and uh, I was you know kind of unhappy for a long time and uh, didn't know what to do you know it's kind of like I was an ad guy I'd always been an ad guy I just figured you know I'll always be an ad guy so just kind of figure out how to be happy and mm -hmm. I uh, couldn't do it <laughs> I yeah. couldn't figure it out you know I, I'm, a, I'm a creative so you know kind of just collecting a paycheck and not really being creative was really difficult for me I can relate so, to that yeah, yeah. so let uh, uh, Tell me your story. No, sometime. no, no. It's, this is more about. I, yeah, that's yeah. exactly how I felt when I left my day job. I was an IT nerd. Oh, okay. Went into doing music and YouTube and everything creative, and it changed my perspective on everything. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So it's a, and it's funny, you know, you, you say that, and I'm sure a lot of people hear your story, and I'm, they're completely inspired to do the same. It's one Excellent. of the byproducts of starting Walt Grace, where this was really. Uh, you know, you say the thought process. There was no thought process. I was in the shower mm -hmm. and I heard a song um, about a guy just like me, desperately hating his whole place and yeah. dreaming of a new life. And uh, in the song, he wanted to build a homemade submarine. And um, I'm listening. It's like I had never heard the song before either. I'm just in, in there, you know, soaping up and listening to Siri, uh, Sonos. But this guy wants to build a homemade submarine interesting and his wife told his kids he was crazy and his friends said he'd fail if he try and I'm like this sounds just like me because um, <laughs> I started an interactive multimedia ad agency in the early oh, 90s okay. which I could relate to this guy building the submarine mm -hmm. because you know and everyone's saying he was crazy because back then when I said we were gonna shop from home people thought like oh my god do you hear about Bill he's like, yeah, he thinks we're gonna shop from home he's doing some kind of teleportation machines and you know and we're gonna have computers in our pockets one day and it's not <laughs> yeah, we're all walking yeah, around yeah, yeah. you know so I could relate to this guy who was building a submarine in his basement and everyone calling him crazy but of course as this song goes on he uh with the will to work hard and a library card he took a homemade one-man fan blade submarine ride and he did it mm. and if, you know the song goes on to talk about how he you know i don't know if he sailed but whatever you do in a submarine he yeah, made it yeah, yeah, yeah. he made it across the ocean and he ended up in japan and once that happened his family and friends were like, oh, we knew you would do it. So I, you know, I can relate to all of this. But the part that really got me in the song and the part that really changed my whole life was the chorus. And um, it said, when you're done with this world, the next is up to you. Hmm. And I said, holy shit. You know, it is up to me. You know, mm -hmm. I, like I said, you know, I was an ad guy. I'd always been an ad guy. I felt just trapped that I'll always be an ad guy and tried to 
find my my happiness in this like this yeah. imaginary cage that I created for myself. Mm. And I heard that lyric, a very simple thing. When you're done with this world, the next is up to you. Yeah. And I said, oh my God, it is up to me. I can just stop. You know, I didn't need yeah. to do <laughs> what, you know, everyone thought I how I identified. I identified as an ad guy. It was yeah. it was it was the, you know, kind of the conduit to all of my success wow. and you know both monetary mon yep. monetarily and you know just emotionally I was very attached to it mm -hmm. but um I was unhappy and I just said oh my god I just want to stop and I got out of the shower yeah and you know turn the water actually I turned the water off so I could hear the lyrics turn the water back on rinsed off got out and I said I quit I picked up the phone and I called and I said <laughs> I quit and you know they wanted to know where i was going what i was doing and i said i'm just gonna go find my submarine mm -hmm. and they said you know all right where are you <laughs> we'll, we'll be right there you're scaring us yeah yeah, yeah. and i i looked down i said you don't want to come where i am right now yeah. you know still standing there naked in the bathroom and um once i convinced them that i wasn't standing on a ledge somewhere you know about to end it all i i told them you know i'm just gonna go do what makes me happy yeah. and uh so i hung up the phone and i was like holy shit you know, what did I just do? Like, I just, you know, I didn't just quit a job. I, qu I quit yeah, a career. career. Yeah, yeah, I, qu I, yeah. quit, I quit a life. I quit, you know, what I, how I identified. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm shaking and I'm like, you know, oh my God, what, what is my submarine? Like, maybe I should have figured this out before I quit my, <laughs> quit my job. I said, oh, well, that's, that's easy. You know, I'll do something with vintage guitars. I love vintage guitars. I've been collecting and been playing vintage guitars since I was eight years old. Yeah. I'll, I'll do something with vintage guitars. And I was like, but I do love vintage Porsches. You know, maybe I'll, maybe, maybe I'll do something with vintage Porsche cars and something like that. And I said, do I do cars? Do I do guitars? And, you know, kind of like a movie, you know, the, I had this moment where I said, you know, I heard the lyrics again in my head. When you're done with this world, the next is up to you. Mm -hmm. And I said, it is up to me. I'm going to open up a vintage car and vintage guitar gallery. Yeah. Okay, not a vintage car dealership and not a guitar shop I was going to open a vintage car and guitar gallery that celebrated the artistry yeah, really yeah, the yeah, artistry yeah. of both vintage cars and vintage guitars and what was inherent you know to both of them I'm um, not even wow. thinking about the similarities you know the beautiful mm -hmm. sexy lines of mm -hmm. both or even the the custom colors nothing I just said this is what I love I'm going to open a gallery I'm going to open in the Wynwood Arts District of Miami yeah uh, where all the other art galleries were and i'm going to call it walt grace vintage yep walt grace vintage and the reason i called it walt grace um which i left out of the story um is the little man in the in this in the song oh wow his, his name was walt grace oh there the, we go yeah the song yeah. starts out and it says walt grace desperately hating his whole place wow um, there we go you know and dream to discover a new space so i stood there naked in the shower and i said i am walt grace yeah and uh <laughs> here i am you know six years later i have somehow become Walt Grace. I even get credit card offers to Walt Grace. Yeah, oh, <laughs> so, well. You know, people call it, is Walt Grace there, please? <laughs> yeah. so, uh, well, you would assume yeah. someone with that name. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, you know, that's it's... It. Uh, yeah, so sorry for the long-winded answer no, to what, that's, the, that's what the inspiration was, but it, or what the thinking was. I, I feel uh, now like I've, I'm just walked through your brain and, you know, like all that kind of stuff, seeing everything that you've just described, like in reality. It must be a pretty great sensation or feeling now walking in and going wow look at this I, I did this yeah you know sometimes it hits me where i'm just like wow this yeah. is amazing and and like i said before you know it's it's become so much more than a vintage car and guitar gallery and i don't mm -hmm. mean the business all the other arms of walt grace yeah um i'm talking more about just the the uh, inspirational aspects of it. People come in all the time and they're just like, dude, I just wanted to meet you. I'm so inspired by yeah. your story because I have a, you know, a, a version of that story on the website. And people read it and people hear it and, you know, in interviews and whatever. And people are just like, you know, I heard your story and I just, I, I realized, or I didn't even, didn't even know how unhappy I was yeah. until I heard your story and I quit my career and I quit my job and I did this or I came out of the closet, whatever it was mm -hmm. that inspired people to change changed their lives drastically yeah, that's great. Um, and that was that was never an intention of mine but it's such a rewarding it's the most rewarding part of this whole thing I think it's pretty common for creative people to have that lust for something else I always say it's better to create something from nothing than you know going through the motions 
sort of zaps your soul. Sure. It's really hard to explain to people if yeah. you don't have that creative outlet of any kind. It could oh, be pe people used to say to me all the time, yeah. oh, poor guy, you don't know what color Porsche to buy. <laughs> you know, and it's like, it's not about that, yeah, man. Yeah, it's yeah. not that at all. I just, and the worst part is getting credit for things that you didn't even do. You know, it's like when you see your name as like executive creative director on something and you weren't even in the room when the real creatives did it, yeah, you yeah. weren't even in the same continent. It's very soul sucking, yeah, you know, yeah. and it's very, <laughs> You know, it's very unfulfilling because, yeah. you know, it's ever since I was a little kid, it's like I associated any kind of, you know, adulation I got with hard work and mm -hmm. things that I did. And when the work wasn't that hard and I was getting the credit and the money and all that, it, it wasn't that fulfilling. Yeah, and, you no, know, no, and that's, that's the creative gene that you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, even when you look around Walt Grace, every little thing from the, the wood selection of the materials that mm -hmm. I built the place to the design of the coffee bar and the cafe to this office, everything yeah. I've designed, you know, from scratch, I, and you know, I don't even do it in CAD, I do it in Illustrator, because I'm a, a graphic oh, yeah, designer. Yeah, I do it go. in Illustrator, yeah, yeah. and then I you know, design everything way harder than you know, it has to be. Yeah. And I give that to the, to the guy. So I'm involved in every aspect wow. of the brand. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. yeah, well, this is the most impressive shop I've ever seen. I oh, mean, it's, it's not even close. I mean, all over Europe, through Australia, all over the US, I haven't seen anything that's quite like this. So wow, thank you so much. Well done, and uh, yeah, I, I wish you all the best for Thank what you. comes next? Appreciate that. Yeah, man. awesome. Thank you awesome. so much. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. This is Randy from Walt Grace Vintage Guitars in Miami. He's going to give us a rundown of some of these beautiful guitars, starting with this flying V from Gibson. Wow. Uh, this is one that they produced last year. Mm -hmm. It was a limited run from the Murphy Lab. Uh, it took them about three years to actually curate the wood to put this run together. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Brazilian rosewood and Carina wood isn't something that comes in great abundance anymore these days. Mm -hmm. So uh, it takes them a while to put the stash together to build a run like this. But um, there was only 81 examples produced uh, as there were in 1958. Um, so it's based on an original 58 uh, Gibson Flying V, um, as you can see wow. from the Murphy Lab, it's been weather checked uh, authentically or to the yep. best of their ability. Um, so. It had me fooled, you know, when we saw it in the cabinet, it could have yeah. been an old one, you know, like they've really done a great well, job Well, we this. probably wouldn't have it hanging in here if it was a real, yeah. it would be about a half a million dollars. Oh. And these would be a little more security than those latches yeah. there. <laughs> but uh, it is a great run of guitars. So, yeah. uh, we've been lucky to have a few of them here through the shop and uh, they've done very well for us. People really seem to enjoy them. They've been a, a great run of guitars. I actually own a Flying V. Could you, uh, yeah, I was just going to ask, how heavy is it? Okay, it's a little bit heavier than mine, but you yeah. much fatter neck too, obviously, in the different Yeah, it's quite a large profiled material. neck for sure. Absolutely. Wow, very cool. Uh, this is a 1967 Gibson ES335. Uh, some of the traits notable of the 60s, the double tulip ring tuning machines, uh, the sunburst, which pretty much came along in the 60s. Uh, this one actually has a factory Bigsby tremolo as opposed to the trapeze style tailpiece that yeah, would have well. come, been pretty predominant in that era. This also has the custom made plate. Now what these actually did under here, there was holes. So if you wanted to put this in, uh, turn it into a stop tail piece mm -hmm. and take the Bigsby off, you had the ability to do so on this particular oh, model. Cool. Uh, but this is a very, very nice example. Very well taken care of. Actually has the original case. Everything's original with the pickups. Uh, just a really special guitar. Also the smaller nut, uh, mid 65, they actually changed from the 111 16 nut hmm. and went to the smaller, uh, smaller nut headstock, but it still, Pretty clubby in the in the lower register if you check out the head. Oh, oh yeah, well, right there. yeah, okay. So it gets pretty big, yeah. but tapers down pretty small at the bottom there. So. Far out. It's pretty uncommon, is it, the Bigsby's on these? Because no, I, I, for, just uh, you did see a fair amount of them. And yeah. in all actuality, uh, you know, some people uh, aren't a great big fan of the the Bigsby's because some cite tuning issues, and some do if they're yeah. not set up appropriately, but. Uh, I always thought they sounded a lot better because you got this nice big fat footprint on mm -hmm. the top of the guitar which all that resonation comes through the strings so you yeah, get a, yeah. just a very full sound out of it. Wow. Uh, you can't add a little weight to the instrument but yep. um, yes, yes, you know, cool. they sure look cool. Very nice. It's cool. Thank you. Cheers. Sure. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for watching folks. My name's Shane. As you can see, Walt Grace Vintage Guitars has its own unique look and style not only inside but also outside. One of the local artists here Lefty out there, I think is the name of the artist. 
pretty much designed the outside of this shop and it is really something special and unique. It's a great story to hear from Bill who gave us his rundown about how he got started being a creative person stuck in the grind and then shifting his life to make something as beautiful as this. It's a really great story. These guys are really lovely, so if you're interested in checking out some of the finest guitars, cars, and if you need a coffee, come check out Walt Grace Vintage Guitars. It is really something special. I'm glad to be able to showcase this on the channel. Please leave a thumbs up if you can. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. If you want to see what they've got, I'll link down to their website in the description so you can go through the website. The website was one of the things that sold me on this shop. So go check it out, and I'll catch you on the next video. Catch you soon. See ya.